Hi, welcome to another edition of the Mainframe here on BlauTech.com and WGRE.net. Uh, this is Jeff Lovett along with Paul Blau, and every week we talk about tech issues, gadgets, and ways that you as an individual or a business can get most out of technology. Today we're going to talk about the ambiguous website. Now, if you're watching this, it's probably because you actually went to a website and you already kind of know what it is. But today we want to talk about, Paul, uh, the reasons why, especially uh, your business clients, need to be having a website exactly what needs to be on there, how to determine what to put on there, and what to do to make make sure that people can, can actually get something out of that. Now, before we actually started this interview, we were talking about the fact that a website really is uh, useless unless there's something on there that wants to draw people to it. So right. the first question we need to ask uh, is really, why does a business out there, any business, need a website? Well, you're starting with the right question. When we ask the question why, really for any business process, that's that's what we ought to be doing to begin with. When it comes to websites, um, that question is incredibly important because websites are created for different reasons. Uh, in some cases, uh, they're created to communicate uh, to existing clients uh, information about your company, how to get customer support information, how to contact us in case you need us, uh, resource material, things like that that may be available. In other cases, it's predominantly used for prospecting for people that really don't know a whole lot about you, or maybe even a combination of those two. Yeah. Uh, really, so you're asking that question to start with, why do I need a website? What is it uh, going to do for my business? How is it going to help me? Uh, so we do start with that, that question. Like in our case, um, we really want to uh, present a professional image to people as we expand our reach. And so we are fairly well known in Cairo and surrounding areas. But as uh, part of our sales goals, we have to go further and further out to be able to find clients that are good matches for our services. Well, the further out we go, the less well-known we are. Right. So people are oftentimes, and I could not tell you how often, when we'll go and talk with a prospect that's, that's further out, uh, they will recite information off of our website back to us. So it's very obvious that they've gone there and that they've, they've seen that information. And we get comments about, oh, your, you know, your website was professional. So it's kind of funny to think that you may be uh, compared against a competitor just by the quality of your, your right. website. Well, the website really is kind of the front door now. I mean, it's the very first thing people see a lot of times in business and in all businesses. We're not just talking about businesses like Blau Tech or a car dealership, but even mom and pop that have uh, a cupcake shop. I mean, people are going there right. to check on it. Uh, I know that a lot of times when I'm traveling, before I'll choose a restaurant, I will go and look at the websites right. of all the different places and look at the menus online before I you know, choose where I'm going to have dinner in this strange town. And so even the smallest of businesses need a website. Correct. And that is exactly how uh, people are being uh, re-educated to get information is instead of uh, calling their friends or looking something up in the yellow pages, they're going to go online and they're going to try to find as much information about that as possible. And so I agree with you. If you're a particularly a business that's marketing anything, really what business doesn't market something, uh, you've got to have a presence on the internet to allow people to get information on your right. company. And think about it from this standpoint, Jeff. Um, you, the website's up 24-7, and so you, f you can field uh, requests for information at 2 o'clock in the morning. Somebody wakes up and they can't sleep and they're tooling around on the internet, and they can actually do some research on your company, make a decision. Um, in many cases, if you've got some e-commerce capability built into your website, they can go ahead and place an order and come first thing in the morning, you're ready to start shipping and making something uh, right off the bat. Or right. they can frame a question and, and send that to you so that your people are ready to respond first thing in the, in the morning regarding that. So it's a 24-7 uh, way of communicating, a really, really powerful tool from that standpoint. But I think that one of the key pieces is, is that you've got to have that professional look. A lot of times, just being honest, when we go to look at websites, we find quite a few that are really not very professional looking and you think about that image that it, it presents to people when they, they go and they look at your website and it looks like it's just been thrown together or it's just a business card that's kind of been populated onto um, a web page. It really doesn't say, hey, here's a business that's progressive, here's a business that it gets technology and is using it for uh, an advantage to be able to help. Right. And the other thing is, is that, think about it, when you're interested in a business or a person a lot of times the very first thing you do is we pick up our telephone, we press the little button and we go, Siri, tell me about Blau Tech. Right. And what Siri's going to do is it's going to take you straight to the website. That's correct. And so we want to make sure that when we ask that kind of thing on our phone or on our our, our, our website on you know on our computer, that it that what they're gonna see really looks good. 
Right, so most, uh, most queries, most searches now are being done on mobile devices, whether it's uh, an iPad or an iPhone or, or some such device. That's where people are getting their information from. Unfortunately, almost all websites are designed for computer screens, mm -hmm. and they don't adapt very well down to the mobile. And so you go and you look up that information on that person's website, uh, and it's very hard to read, very hard to navigate, and they've got these itty-bitty little buttons that you're trying to tap on, you're tapping on the wrong thing, and you only have a couple of seconds, literally a couple of seconds to capture somebody when they first come to your website. You make it too aggravating for them, they're going to go on uh, yeah. to someplace else. And so what you want is a website that adapts automatically to whatever device it, it finds that is trying to access it. Uh, and that is a critical piece. We've done that with our website. We recommend that with our clients' websites to make sure that the, it, if you're using a computer, you don't want to look at an itty-bitty screen. You want it right. to be full, full featured and full, uh, full screen capability. Um, but when you go down to an iPad, you want it to shrink down appropriately. When you go down to a phone, you want it to shrink down even more and then kind of consolidate down on the core information that needs to be presented. Right. Now, uh, tell me about what Biotech can do, because I know that you have a new person here on, uh, mm -hmm. on staff that that's what they're doing. If you don't, don't have a website or if you need yours modified, what kind of services do you guys offer? So we do everything uh, related to the websites from hosting them to providing the, the design capabilities. Uh, whether you want to do some self-maintenance or not, uh, we can help uh, either facilitate you going in there and, and modifying your own website, or we'll do the whole thing for you, uh, all the way from very simple sites that just communicate contact information, and that's the bare minimum you should have. You should have more than that, but right. that's the minimum that you should have. You should Everybody should have a website saying, here's our address, our store hours, our uh, phone numbers, our contact information, bar minimum. Uh, but we also can do full-fledged mobile-friendly websites that will adapt down to whatever device that they're on, communicating exactly the content that you want to. And speaking of content, maybe that's really key for a website. Right. And, and I mean, what, what if, if, if someone's watching this and they don't really have a website, tell me what the, the top three or four things that people need to have on their website. Obviously, we want people to respond to whatever you're doing, so there needs to be some contact information yep. that's readily available. Right, I agree totally, uh, the, and you want to make it easy. There, you go to a lot of websites, and it's almost like they're trying to play yeah. a game with you, hide and seek, as to how to actually call them or contact them. I think your, your phone number needs to be plastered over uh, all the pages, Big bold letters, easy to get to. Uh, don't don't sneak it under contact us. And only in the very there. bottom, all of them. You yeah. scroll all the way to the bottom, and it's in tiny, yeah. tiny little letters. And those companies, I get the feeling you're right that they really don't want you to call them. And that's exactly how I feel too. And I think what they're trying to say is is that you know we're we're too important for your business, and so if you really want something, send us an email. If we feel like it, we'll get back to you. And that's not uh, the the message that you want to send to somebody. Right. So contact information on sure. the website. Now, what's the other things that, that are critical to making sure that, it, that it's a decent website that really achieves what you want? Well, you want to communicate your message, and everybody ha uh, has a message. Um, you may not know exactly what that message is because you've not sat down and put it on a piece of paper, but you have a message about your business, a story that, you know, is a, why did you go into business, what are you doing, who are you, and that needs to be communicated. People like stories, um, right. love stories, and that's going to intrigue them and interest them. And what you're looking for ultimately is something you know, called a, a unique selling position, USP, which is what drives people to choose you over somebody else. And that sounds a lot easier than you would think uh, than it, it really is in real life. Uh, trying to figure out what your u uh, unique selling position is is really difficult because what you're going to do is say things like, um, we provide great customer service. Well, really. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's not unique. Yeah. Uh, nobody's going to say we provide bad customer service, and right. so that's that's what makes us unique. So maybe what you should do is really ask some of your customers. You know, I mean, what yeah. what what is it that made you choose my my store, my restaurant, my water? And one of the things we've talked about is how powerful video is. If you ask people that on camera and just let them con comment uh, mm -hmm. uh, extemporaneously, you know, why did you choose my place? And let them just talk in your video. That is content that not only provides you the information about what it is that you should say about your business uh, in all your marketing, but gives you some content that you can actually use on the website that yeah. people will see. Yeah, and, and speaking of content, that's the third thing that you really need to have, is you've got to have information on your website that is fresh and relevant to whatever it is that people are looking for. And it needs to be tied to multiple things like YouTube and uh, you know, social media, right. and, you know, all of it feeding back into the website so that you have a call of action there within that website. 
um, that ultimately is going to lead to growing your business. Right. And, and, and it can't yourself. be static because this is one thing I learned a few years ago. Mm -hmm. The way that Google and some of the other uh, places actually search engines uh, determine who goes to the top of the mm -hmm. pack when you type in you know computers in South Georgia is the fact that you have one fresh content on your website right. constantly. It's they, they gauge it by how many times you make updates to your website. Right. The more times you change your website, the higher it comes mm -hmm. on the search. And also the amount of links that you have to and from your website. Mm -hmm. Those are two things that you really have, have to have uh, to make it where people actually ever even see your website. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's very, very important that you think about that when, you, when you're designing. Now as far as uh, uh, how you determine how people find how well you re, you come in results when it comes to Google and things. There are also some tricks that you can help people to come right. up with, and that can yeah. be uh, keywords and key phrases and mm -hmm. things like that. Right, and it gets more and more challenging every uh, year as Google works on their algorithms and try to make sure that we can't game the system. Because um, really what they want to do is they want to sell you ad positioning. Right. Um, and they want you to pay money to get up at the top of the list. And well, sometimes, sometimes that's okay, because a lot of businesses can really benefit from paying 25 cent to get someone to click on their website. Yeah, there are a lot of businesses that um, justifiably spend two thousand twenty five hundred dollars a month on Google AdWord placement, uh, and they get that money right back uh, right. from marketing leads. Now, you you got to be real careful with that because you got to make sure that you're you, you know what you're doing and you're marketing correctly, and you're going to get the right connections that are going to be able to then turn into leads. Um, but even if you don't spend any money on on positioning. There are tricks that you can do. It's called search engine optimization, SEO sometimes, uh, abbreviated that way. Uh, and you've already mentioned one of the key pieces, and that's the links and, and staying fresh with content. Um, I noticed that uh, Google likes uh, links that you do through Google+, Plus, which almost mm. no one uses. Uh, Google+, Plus is one of those social media things that we don't talk a whole lot about because it's a, it was Google's attempt to oust Facebook and, and several of the other uh, medias out there. Not not very well used. Not very not much happens. But sure enough, if you put a uh, a link on there and you post some uh, comments on there, it seems to elevate right on uh, mm -hmm. up to the very top of the list. Uh, so I think that's important to consider in that overall uh, scheme of how you're communicating to your customers. All right, and also there's some tricks that uh, you can do to uh, uh, get uh, links on Facebook and things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, we can put links to our website on Facebook. Mm -hmm. One last thing I want to ask you about, and that is. How do we use our website to make money? I mean, there are ways to actually sell stuff on your mm -hmm. website, products right. or services, so that you're open 24-7. Yeah, so uh, there are uh, things just as easy as um, connecting up with Amazon. Amazon has a website uh, storefront uh, that you can use uh, for yourself, and they charge a, a percentage to be able to use their technology. You also can sell through Amazon, and they'll charge a larger percentage for that because you actually will pop up inside of the Amazon search. And then there are other products um, out there that allow you to do e-commerce specifically on your website uh, to allow you to do sales uh, through that and get credit cards and secure payments. And mm. We can secure the websites. We've got a whole uh, suite of technologies to make sure your, your website doesn't get hacked and doesn't, yeah. doesn't get compromised. So it opens up a whole new market. Even when you close at 5 o'clock, yeah. you're still in business for people yeah. to buy your product. Right, exactly. And you know, okay. you've got to communicate that information out to people and be able to help them to understand you know, that you're available 24-7. And uh, you, we recommend that you include the website information on all of your marketing invoices, statements, everything that you do. And make sure you keep those websites short and succinct. I've seen some websites that were 70 characters long oh, that you'll never be able to remember. Yeah. So that's another thing is choosing the right uh, website and domain name, uh, that's where it kind of starts to go from there. Now, of course, the subject of websites is, is far too complex for us to cover just in the short 15-minute video. If you want to learn more and see some examples, go to wildtech.com or call uh, Paul at 229-377-8825. Uh, He'll be glad to talk to you about how to get a website for your business that really starts to pay off. Hey, thanks for watching The Mainframe here on wildtech.com. <laughs>